Hey, my name is Drew Hollis here from Akai Professional, here to give you an overview of the MPCX. Now, this is a product that we've been developing for a long time. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into making this. We really wanted to make sure that all of the legacy MPCs that everyone were in love with in the past and the new controllers that we've come out with were merged under one roof. So this is a completely standalone unit that can also function as a controller for MPC software. So inside here, what I have is a 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor, two gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of onboard memory. Now that's fully expandable, so if this is your core production piece and you're gonna be bringing this from studio to studio, room to room, you have 16 gigs on board, but that's also expandable. I have a SATA drive bay underneath and I can put another hard drive in there. And I also have expandability through SD and through additional USB slots. So let's give an overview of the top of the hardware here. First of all, the number one thing people always see is this beautiful 10 inch full touch color screen and that has 10 full points of touch. So if you do an effects manipulation or doing a lot of hardcore things, you can actually have all 10 points of touch active at the same time. Up the top here we have our classic MPC pad banks. So I have 16 pads in front of me but those can be expanded over 8 separate banks. A through D and then E through H. Below that, I have all my classic MPC tools like full level, 16 level, track mute, next sequence. And then anytime you see red underneath these knobs, that basically means I can hit my shift button, hit that or double tap it to get to there. Below that, I have even more hardware switches. And one thing you'll notice about the MPC-X across the board is almost every single function on the MPC-X has a dedicated hardware switch, which is really useful for muscle memory. And once you're really in those late night sessions, not double guessing where things are. But besides that, if I don't want to use my hardware switches back to the touchscreen, I have easy access to just about any option that I'd want to get to. My main track mix, if I want to go to my sample editing, I can use my touch screen to actually go in here and actually edit things all the way down to the sample. It's really, really accurate. Below my main transport and contact section here, I have my Q-Link knobs. So those of you that have seen the MPC Renaissance in the past will immediately identify that we have OLED scribble strips next to each and every Q-Link. And what that means is no matter what part of the MPC I'm in, these Q-Links are going to adapt themselves per what mode I'm in. So if I go to my program edit, now for my samples, I have dedicated hardware switches and I can actually see exactly what's on my screen and what I wanna edit at that point in time. Directly under the screen, I have my core core functions that I'm gonna be bouncing around a lot with. So my main menu, that'll take me to all the different modes of my MPC. I have my browse mode that'll allow me to load my samples and uh, basically import any other information I have from external hard drives. My step sequencer, which is extremely robust, one of the best, if not the best, step sequencer on the market, hands down, just for ease of use and the abilities that you have here in your step sequencer. Of course, your sampler, and we have XYFX, which will allow you to do effects manipulation using the touchscreen itself. Below all that, I have the best pads in the industry. They're the most responsive, the most uh, tactile when it comes to dialing it exactly what you want from the pad. So I can dial in my threshold, my velocity, and actually the curve of how much pressure it takes to trigger that pad. Best in the industry, you guys are going to love them. So up at the top here, again, we have our VU meters and another OLED screen here, which actually tell you exactly what you're monitoring, whether it's your input or your output. On the back here, now we have tons and tons of inputs and outputs. MPC has been known as being obviously a MIDI production center, now a music production center with the case of MPC-X. We have eight dedicated outputs. We have six inputs on here and dedicated phono inputs. So if you have a vinyl turntable and you want to sample your own material into the MPC, you have a dedicated phono input. You don't need any other conversion to get that stuff in. Next to the MIDI, ins and outs, I also have CV outputs. So control voltage that will send messages out to my analog synthesizers, and I can actually save those as programs inside my MPC and automate all of that stuff. It's really, really cool. 
Off the side here, I also have some XLR and combo TRS inputs. And it's important to note, we have some really, really great mic pre's on here, but they're also defeatable. So if you have some really expensive outboard pre and you'd rather use that preamp to get the sounds in, you can fully do that. These are defeatable if you go through the TRS. We also have an SD card slot on the back so you can get your stuff in and out. And of course, like I said, it's expandable for memory. So really the sky is the limit for whatever you want to do with this, including the fact that this comes with the full version of MPC 2.0 software. So if you're using the standalone, you actually have now access to eight full audio tracks to record directly into your MPC without any computer hooked up. But if you want to add more audio tracks, all you have to do is hook it up to your MPC software via your laptop. And really at that point, you have as many audio tracks as your computer can handle. Now this is a very brief overview of the MPC-X. If you want more information, please visit fullcompass.com or contact your Full Compass sales professional. Thanks.